everybody! Welcome so much to Pitch Your Game Idea. Uh, thank you very much for coming out on a Sunday morning at 10.30. I think when they scheduled us, they said, what will make this panel more entertaining? And it's if the judges are grumpy <laughs> and surly from lack of sleep. Um, also, I realize that Robert's giving his Q&A and we're competing against that, and I know you'd all rather be there. Uh, so a quick history. Um, this panel is just to be kind of, it's lighthearted. If you have a real serious game idea, please don't pitch it because we will make you cry. Um, it always happens. There's always at least one person who's like, this, I really want to make this game. And when we tell them it sucks, they get very angry and run away. Um, so the format goes like this. When I say go, we only have one mic. There's a mic over there in that aisle. You'll line up. Not yet, I didn't say go. They're moving closer, guys. You do not get to go to the second round. Oh, um, See, I'm grumpy. 10.30 in the morning. Wow. Um, you will have 30 to 45 seconds to give us your elevator pitch, your high concept, this is what my game is. We might ask a couple questions, but then we'll say yes or no. Um, if you get a, no matter what answer you get, go sit down. At about halfway through the panel, I'll say, okay, everyone who had a yes, get back up. And then we might ask a few follow-up questions, um, see if the idea is still as funny 20 minutes later. <laughs> and, uh, and then once we hear, we get through that, then we'll assign prizes to the top three. An odd collection of prizes, <laughs> including Canadian candy bars and Hong Kong currency. <laughs> This is like, it's like an airport lost and found up here. <laughs> so, so I'm going to have our panelists introduce themselves, starting directly to my okay, right. Okay, hey, I'm Chris Straub. I'm a cartoonist, and I do stuff with Scott Kurtz a lot for PATV, and I do Chainsaw Suit, and I just finished my seven-year-long strip, Star Slip. And I'm up in Banland after this. I am uh, Greg Yertager and or Pork Fry. I work for Microsoft, and I like doing this panel, and I think it's going to be cool. <laughs> well, what are your industry creds? <laughs> I've been in the industry for about 14 years, uh, testing games, and uh, now I am a lead tester, and I manage like 15,000 titles. One of them, I might be wearing a shirt of, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe they're down a in product. the baseball. You should check them out. <laughs> All right. There might be blocks. You should check it out. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm uh, Gordon Bellamy. I'm on the board of the IGDA. Um, I do biz dev for a company called Tencent. Um, you might know League of Legends fame and the like. Um, got industry credit. Uh, I did, oh, I was designed on Madden way back when. Totally dude bro. And, um, oh, and I'm one of the biggest losers in U.S. game show history. This is true. True wow. story. Google him. Uh, my name is Jeff. I'm with Penny Arcade. I've been in the industry eight years, um, most recently helping produce the Rain Slick 3 game. So, so I didn't know we needed Also, that. we have a booth. I didn't know this was an industry credit thing. No, well, you're I'm, here for comedic relief I'm just only. flavor. That's fine. <laughs> Plus, you look good on camera. All right. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Go. <clears throat> you should no pushing. About that. That's no pushing. Good. Part of the entertainment for me is the battle royale. Yeah. No weapons. <clears throat> I'll hand those out in the second round. Wow. Let's find out. Is it best to go first? Let's see. Let's find out. <laughs> Hello. What is your game? Oh, well, there's a switch. Nope, you it's a terrible game. On the... <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. All right. So the three biggest problems to learning a new language are immersion, immediate use, and another thing. <laughs> Basically, my idea is a basic point-and-click adventure game that will teach languages completely through immersion and context. Uh, so, Rosetta Stone the game? Yes. It's already out. It's called Rosetta Stone. Yes. Yeah. But Rosetta Stone costs hundreds of dollars and okay. isn't on Facebook. <laughs> if you could go on Facebook and brag to your friends, I know economy. Japanese. Wouldn't you hold that over your friends? <laughs> That's all you get. You get a credit that says you've made it through the game. You can post that on Facebook. I think it's actually a pretty decent concept. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to play it. 
There's no the problem. Is, money is every time money? someone does something, the, my, my Facebook status updates will be filled with friends in other languages. Wait, does it give you Japanese friends? No, no just it could <laughs> if you're into that. That'll no. <laughs> no. 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 Sit down. No. No. He said no. No. Oh, by the way, if there's a tie, I count. <laughs> Just because it's my panel. I've been here longest. All right. I am also pitching you something educational. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, we, we have visual what? aids. You have visual aids. That's what uh, Sunday morning is. Oh, okay, real game. then. All right. That's what okay. this means. I am uh, pitching you a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Uh, it's a game about strife between two groups, historical reenactors and cosplayers, and the Wait strife between their own, in their own groups. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, show that off. No, I, no. Uh, for a three-day weekend, four different recre recreationist groups uh, leave the big city in different directions and have a good time uh, in the seclusion of nature. The groups include uh, uh, civil wars, uh, ancient roamers, middle agers, and uh, organ trailers or uh, cowboys and Indians. Or, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, just looking at your four-circle Venn diagram. Those are our villains. I see that you're going for horror, steampunk, sci-fi, and the furries. And where they all overlap as convention goers. You know, that way. Well, now, Jeff, Jeff, it's very important. The furries are an underperved market. <laughs> Don't make me regret asking you about this. <laughs> so, although it's a strong core demographic that you're going for, I think your potential consumer base is fairly limited. Like, if everyone here bought it, uh -huh. which I doubt, <laughs> you're still not going to hit enough to break even. Oh. No. Ah, I know. Ugh. You're so mad today, yes. Jeff. I'm wow. 10.30 in the morning. It's it's like, Sunday. Rawr, rawr, rawr. All, All right. right. So uh, my game idea is uh, uh, light gun Russian roulette. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So every time you go into a software store in the last 20 years or so, they always had like Las Vegas blackjack and poker. And they're always in the 499 bin. We gotta kick it up a notch, make it a little edgier, a little more exciting. How how does this how does this get past the ESRB ever? Let's just start there. Oh, it's great, because even if you lose, you're like, all right, let's go again. one. <laughs> So, so you start by making up an avatar. You pick you know, your, your usual things, hair color, eye color. You right. go into a That's seedy important. club, into the back room, and you sit down at a table with a bunch of other people. You spin the chamber on the gun, and you just start betting. Okay. I like so it. So is there like a currency here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like what? it. What? We're, we're going to work on uh, a, uh, uh, a freemium business model. A freemium. <laughs> oh. And the, the yes. best... Well, so, so, oh. I sense there might be more questions. Okay. Yeah. I, all right. You said yes. I was too mean, but I, all right. apparently we're going to say yes to the guy who wants to shoot themselves. Well, we just need more information. Yes. Okay. So. Second round. We're hesitant. Yeah. We're well, hesitant. Yes. Okay. So I've noticed a, a trend in recent years that people seem to be more interested in food trucks. And I thought that you could make a multiplayer co-op game uh, that is also competitive out of food trucks, where one player is driving the food truck, one player is on the top shooting a potato gun, and one person <laughs> is in the back, like, operating the fryer and stuff like that. So think Crazy Taxi uh, or Mario Double Dash crossed with Cooking Mama. You want a food truck-based game, but instead of being some sort of cooking simulation, you've turned it into a driving shooter? No, no, no. There is the food simulation in the back, in the truck. Uh, right. you, you, you still have to serve your customers. So it's just, it's but is, just but you is there, a is it, is it still Twisted Metal at all? Yes. So you're playing a driving game, and your friend is playing a cooking game. Yes. Yes. And that's it. I can I do that, that it, right now. I think that it touches on a lot of bases. <laughs> I think that, you know, a lot of appeal. Driving? Second round. Second round. All right. Oh. A, lot of, a lot of people like food. All right. Have for you the greatest gaming idea since Pac-Man. <laughs> American Tall Tales in Space, Paul Bunyan Interspell, Interstellar Lumberjack. Paul it Bunyan Interstellar Lumberjack. It is a first-person okay. axe adventure crossed with a 2.5D brawler where you play as Paul Bunyan Interstellar Lumberjack versus Johnny Appleseed and his army of alien mutant 
Apple trees. Is Babe there? Babe, the, the moon ox is there. Moon ox. <laughs> well done. <laughs> that, that tipped it over for me. He had, me, <laughs> he had me at hello. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, Let's I, see. <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of portmanteaus. So the game idea my friends and I came up with at 3.30 in the morning last night is called uh, Dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is, it is a PlayStation Move title uh, where you swing dinosaurs around and make them fight each other. You can... Uh, <laughs> you can... <laughs> You could perhaps use an ankylosaurus as some kind of dinosaur mate. Okay, okay, yes. 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 Dinosaur. Dinosaurs. <laughs> Didn't go where I thought it was going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I've got a third-person time trial game where you play as a brontosaurus that has been transported to the future to uh, New York City. And your goal is to work your way to Central Park where you can find the best foliage to eat. But of course, you're being pursued by time cops who are looking to correct the, uh, the time stream along the way. So, you're a dinosaur. You're a brontosaurus, yes. Still a dinosaur, okay. <laughs> and and, we're, and we're, we're in New York, and the, the struggle is to walk somewhere. Well, okay, you're, you're a fa Have you ever walked arcade in New York? Pace game, you're a fast-moving dinosaur. It's a brontosaurus. Bron I guess that makes really it harder. Is. Yeah. Well, you're also, you're not, you're not lumbering, like you're, you're, Clearly, you're, no. or, but you are, do you, what are you doing? You have a skateboard or, I mean, how do you? Well, so it's, it's, a, it's a very speedy um, brontosaurus racing to avoid <laughs> these time cops who are shooting time energy to suck you back to the past. Well, why don't you pick a faster dinosaur just from the get-go? <laughs> yeah, see, that's my problem. I, I don't think there's been enough brontosaurus representation in games today. Yeah, but you could have DLC for that. So, I mean, what, what, what dinosaur would you suggest? Velociraptors are done. No, 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 no we, we can't build your game. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, I, I think... Bronze no! <laughs> so sad. I if he had like turned it. it into a sword. Yeah. yeah. My game doesn't oh, have sorry. dinosaurs. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Okay. No, it's okay. Fine. <laughs> um, I didn't realize we were doing the absolute most ridiculous game ever, no. so I have a pretty decent idea, I think. Okay. All right, well, let's find out. Uh, the idea is basically a strategy based MMO. So uh, it's taking the target demographic from like civilization, mixing it with, you know, kind of some MMO concepts. I call it basically a colonization MMO. So races include the classic colonization European countries, France, England, Netherlands, Spain. Europe. Right, yeah. <laughs> and you are colonizing uh, a new place. So there's starting areas, obviously, Europe, and then everybody kind of Wait, you're colonizing away. the place you came from? No, no, no. No, no, no you no, start no. in the city to kind oh, of get okay, I'm sorry. set up. Continue. Then you move to a new colony, which actually uh, is randomly populated. The server chooses some good launching points, and people basically get to vote on which area is the best. So you're colonizing by moving to these areas. But will and we be colonizing them, or will we not? When you move there, it's just wilderness. Okay. But it's, okay. it's got kind of an oblivion-based class leveling system where it's just based <laughs> on skill sets. So if you're a spending... Strategy MMO with oblivion class well, leveling. You, you have to open a colony. Real time there, puzzle elements. When you get there, there's nothing. So if everybody's fighting monsters, mm. you get oh. skills. Yep. Yeah. Where is this happening? <laughs> monsters. I need this plane to land. You know, yeah. there's got to be... Uh, Native Americans would be a little politically <laughs> offensive. I think he's ad-libbing now. Okay. No, thank no. you. Okay. No. <laughs> oh. Someone wanted to... You should have had dinosaurs. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I can't add dinosaurs to That's mine, a, I'm sorry. Um, this is more mechanics-based. It's a loot-based first-person shooter PvP game in which the player with the highest amount of experience point multiplied by their kill-to-death ratio drop the best loot. And the person who's highest rank within that particular match is always visible on the radar as well as having a waypoint above them, creating a balance between players who aren't very good and players who are really good taking on a whole bunch of peons. No, but the problem is then you run into just having a whole bunch of people that know how to be mediocre. That n they're <laughs> never good. 
That's a that's a great tagline. It's what? like in this game, like you'll never be good. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go with first person looter. For, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's Borderlands though, so I didn't want to go into that territory. <laughs> Borderlands is more co-op, and I wanted to go more uh, PvP. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Uh, my game is one where you assume another person's identity to commit theft in the doppelganger. <laughs> if this, you're, this if you're able to commit theft, that's yeah. the best way to do it. <laughs> that's, that's it? That's it? Oh, that's, that's the, all we got? That's the elevator pitch. Okay, just give me, give me a sample of what the gameplay's like. So it actually takes place in two phases. There's the preparation and then the execution of the theft. And so the majority of the game is that basically you have to study somebody, maybe tail them, basically go through their mail. So it's and a stalker? Yes. You and stalk then, them so that you can steal things from and pretend yourself. to be them? So like basically a bank employee maybe you'll follow around so you can break into the bank. I'm comfortable with this. Or, you, know. you could check out their windows. You could, look, you could look, break into their house, look in their drawers. Yeah, you, you, can inter you can come in and pretend you're someone else and interview like family members yeah, and stuff like know. that. But the, if it makes you feel better, the preparation part is going to be more turn-based. So oh, it's more of just that making... doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel... I would totally play this game. <laughs> uh, that doesn't yeah. surprise me. Uh, uh, I, we, yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. All right, so everybody has heard sticks and stones break my bones, but words will never hurt me, right? Well, I propose a 2D fighter where you have characters that wield sticks and stones and characters that fight with words. So... <laughs> One, like one, of the one of the characters in the game would literally be a guy holding a twig and a rock. And he's going to fight like this. And then some of the word characters, like one would be an accountant, and one would be a secretary. You know, she sure. takes memos and stuff like that, and, you know, sends a flower truck to the boss's wife's house or whatever, stuff like that. But this is how the characters actually fight. So another character with a stick could be just a baseball player with some humongous bat that he drags around. It could be a Neanderthal from the future with a club. Uh, there's, there'd be space one, there'd, club. There, yeah, space club. There'd be one character where he'd sit on a boulder and somehow he rides this boulder around and that's how he fights. Right, but okay, but then it would just be sticks and stones because we've already established that words will never hurt anyone. So we can't use well, the them proof, to do any damage. No, but the proof is is that words will hurt. That's why the game would just be called sticks and stones. Wait, but they so don't can, hurt. What you just words will never. You hurt. say mean <laughs> things to them until they cry. Well, no, because we'll see. Like, I, I'm not sure how well, a mechanic works. Well, no. The, mecha the mechanics would be fine, trust me, so... <laughs> <laughs> Are you a real dev? <laughs> no, and so... But the proof, the proof in the game is to prove that words would actually hurt. Like, you could, have a you could have Phoenix Wright as a guest character in the game, like a DLC character. You could actually prove that words will hurt and they can hurt more than sticks and stones. I love the fact that you just keep repeating it. I've yet to know how the words will actually cause damage. Well, but I trust you! Yeah. Second thing, I want, I want this to go on. Yeah, okay, I, want to right. I want it to go on. Uh, my game is a game of nerd correction. Nerd um, correction. It's kind of the antithesis of, a, antithesis of a stealth game. You start as a low-level nerd and you pick a class of comic book nerd, video game nerd, whatever. You wander around crowded nerd environments and eavesdrop on people's conversations. And then when you hear something that falls under your class, you know, comic book nerd, whatever, um, it, you can get like a nerd sense to tell you that that's a conversation you should interrupt. Well, actually, and, it's, it's and that Star just, Trek, not you, Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, you actually, uh, that, was, that was the title of the game, that you, when you walk up, you press a button, you get a, like a dialogue wheel, and the better response you get, the more uncomfortable you can make the person, the better it is. I'll and when you, when you get the appropriate interruption, your finger goes up and you say, and the title of the game is, well, actually. Yeah. No, second round. That's why I'm putting second round on this one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's good. All right. That was pretty hard to follow up. Holy shit. That was pretty good. All right, so uh, mine is a puzzle game that is timed. Uh, before the sun rises in the morning, you have to figure out various puzzles, like uh, political, or what blue smells like, or <laughs> come up with dino swords, and it's called, <laughs> one more bump. <laughs> I told you if I got you a pass to PAX, you could not pitch a game. Oh. This is my brother. Oh. oh. No. Oh, come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo. Don't judge my family tree. Sadly, no dinosaurs in this one. All right. Uh, it's called Support Your Local Dungeon Crawler. It's a cross between Reseteer and Fallout. You run and operate a professional dungeon crawling team. Yes! In a world... <laughs> In that's a, a world, plant. He's yeah, a plant. Got one guy that's gonna buy it. In a world that went to hell a few apocalypses back, you could kill all the dinosaurs. Now, it varies on your play style and who your patron is. You could kill all the monsters in the dungeon and turn it into solid gold real estate. You could negotiate with the monsters inside and convince them that human flesh is not palatable with ranch dressing and bacon bits. Or, <laughs> you, Very specific. Stumbling. Yeah. No. No. Or, no. Or you could no. just... No. 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 Go talk to that one guy, though. He might have a prize. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, my game... <laughs> it's tall. My game is an action role-playing game where you play as a character in a Sims-like game trying to overthrow the player. <laughs> okay. I want a little more on that. You do this by trying to crash the game. Now, there are three main gameplay elements of the game. There is the part where... <laughs> You're like but, a, you're a self-aware Sims-like character trying to crash the game. Trying to, to destroy, destroy your own world. Because look, Bioshock said it best: <laughs> a man chooses, a slave obeys. Your character would rather die a free man than live a man a slave. <laughs> I I love it. I love it. Wow. I want more. <laughs> I gotta have it. <laughs> okay. Oh. I wanted to riff on it, but it's his we'll game. Give him another go. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's really. <laughs> so my game is a 2D fighter with a cast of characters exclusively uh, from Shakespeare plays. Uh, he's got over 800 characters. They don't all have to be in the first game. But, uh, three play styles. You've got uh, based on Shakespeare plays. You've got histories, which is more like the strategic, old school, slow fighters. You've got the comedies, which is social for your friends. You get like five life bars and you can do a five versus five street rumble kind of thing. And then a uh, more tournament high gear play. You got the tragedies where it's one versus one and somebody's gonna die. <laughs> I've, I've never really thought of the bard as a source for yeah. a 2D fighter. You got magicians or like Romeo versus Ooh. Macbeth. Like wait, Macbeth wait, Jeff, 2D play. or not 2D? Yeah. Oh! Oh! Boom! All right, go ahead and get back on the panel. <laughs> God damn it, I was looking for the Shakespeare pun and you beat me to it. All right. Uh, no. <laughs> no. So many characters. Hi, uh, my name is Brandon. Um, hey. Hello. Hi. So, uh, I didn't really know if the game was only video games or is it card games too? Oh, we'll, we'll, no. sure. Okay, we'll cool. Trash that idea too. Awesome. So my game's like a party style game where uh, each player is given four cards to start out that were they're like this big and they're like whiteboard kind of deal and you have like a whiteboard pen where you can erase so it's like reusable. Um, each player is tasked with having to make a game idea or a movie plot from these cards, right? So they have to choose three of the cards. The, um, one has like a main like center dialogue, which is five sentences long, which is like the regular 45 seconds. And then the other, four, or other three cards are nouns or places, right, that you have to link within your game. Um, <laughs> the thing is that when you start, you have to kick off, you have to destroy one of your cards, like throw them back in the pile, so you have to choose very carefully. Um, and then after you do that, you have to memorize your pitch and then pitch it in front of the, the audience or so, the so team. You, you've made a pitch your game it's game. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but, okay, sounds good, right? Um, it sounds relatively okay. So wait, let's, let's keep going with that. So okay. your idea is good, so let me help build my idea. Go on. So after you, um, after you pitch, you, off, you pitch it in front of your classroom or your uh, team, your party game team, and then you answer questions on the fly. So it's basically a brainstorming tool that in, uh, increases your, um, your ability to speak in front of people and, uh, and come uh, quickly. Also, like, there's a dinosaur. <laughs> sure, man. <laughs> No, I don't like that. Improv. No. 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 It's, it is a great idea, but... It would make a great panel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a really small market, so, like, I don't know, it's, like, only for <laughs> game like designers. Most people are more... Around. People are more... Like, bring a prototype. Yeah. Um, 
There you go. Yeah, Thank you. I might do that for my, my final. Thank you. Thank you. Just Hello. Hello. My game okay. is a puzzle platformer uh, similar to Portal or Quantum Conundrum, except instead of your main character being a human with some sort of physics-altering device, you are a butterfly. It is a third-person puzzle platformer. You're trapped in a large mansion trying to get out, and your mortal enemy is kittens. <laughs> the kittens are trying to attack you and kill you, and you need to use whatever small things you can have control over as a butterfly, so you can, like, grab a piece of string, maybe dangle so the string in front of the kitten, and you trick the kitten into jumping onto the stove, for instance. <laughs> or, you know, maybe into some knives in the kitchen. So you basically need to eliminate all the kittens in each room in order to get out of the room and onto the next room. <laughs> As the yeah. Oh, and the name of the game brand is, new, the name of the game is kittens Velvet Wings of Calamity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I want to hear more. I, yeah, 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 I guess more around things to flip. So it's, what's it called? No, no, uh, yeah. The name was Velvet Wings of Calamity. Velvet Wings of Calamity. <laughs> I would, have, I would have picked proboscis. You should have called it the butterfly effect. Yeah. Okay, my game is called Everything Was Terrible and Nothing Was Not On Fire. It is a... Everything Was Terrible and Nothing Was Not On Fire. Yeah. It's an iOS and Android game where you play as a newly minted wise guy who's trying to help with the insurance racket scheme by setting some buildings on fire. However, you're terrible at it. You're a bad arsonist? Yes. Yeah. yeah, but still you're burning stuff, so it's like... Ee, ee. But, so some of that like... Stuff is owned, <laughs> but some of that stuff is owned by the mob, and we don't want to burn that. He's trying to burn down like a water park. <laughs> okay, Chris goes to the second round. <laughs> you want me? <laughs> I, um, I don't know. Wait, 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 give us a, a sentence on how it plays. Think I mean, about Paperboy with fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there it is. Okay. okay. Yeah, that, that's the one. That, 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 that was the pitch. That's what goes into the next is. round. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, my game is called Rambi the Redneck Terminator. Um, <laughs> It's a rail shooter for a mobile app uh, it, it, with a Kill Bill storyline. Uh, it starts off, you're a baby deer in the forest, and there's a massacre with your friends and family. <laughs> and then you wake up, and you go through a rocky montage to train, and then you go around and you shoot the rednecks for revenge. The deer shoots people? Yeah. <laughs> with, with extreme, campy, over-the-top <laughs> violence. I, I think this theme's been done before, but... Just, yeah, yeah. The, the deer revenge genre has been explored. Yeah, it's... Oh. Oddly enough, you are <laughs> you are pitching a game in a genre that's been tapped out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that was possible in this particular genre. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, maybe he won because it got made. Like, <laughs> Retroactively, you know, time yeah, travel types. Right. Anyway, um, yeah, so... My basic my idea is, well, a mad scientist, sick of people always mocking him. Besides, Mark Twain had it right. He'll travel back in time, take over King Arthur's court, and become king in the future. Because, you know, time travel lets you do that. Problem is, when he gets back in time, someone from the further future has already gone back in time and done what he wants to do. So now he's got to defeat a time traveler from the further future because, damn it, it was his idea first. <laughs> and it could have dinosaurs because the person from the further future... <laughs> Mind control helmets, goes back in time, gets dinosaurs, brings yeah. them out. You know, an army of dinosaurs you, you in medieval get, times? Come on. You do get bonus points for pandering to the audience, or to the <laughs> judges. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know what you're going with. You haven't wowed us. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's good. When, when all the judges wow. go, eh, 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 eh. I mean, he said sign. time travel. I like time travel. Yeah. <laughs> he Man, did say like dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> I, no. No. Thank you. I, just, I didn't find anything. We're running out of room here on the page. All right. All right. Hello. Hello. So it's a point-and-click, cell-shaded, steampunk action adventure with puzzle elements. You're an inventor. You invent a uh, transporter, and it totally works on stuff. It totally works on animals. And so you're like, okay, fuck this. I'm going to prove it works. I'm going to brick myself up in this tower, like you're inventing tower, um, and um, I'm going to teleport outside. So when you go to do it, um, it, you find out it actually teleports you back into prior lives. Um, so it's uh, the entire scope, the goal of the game is to transport yourself 
fact before you bricked yourself in a tower. Um, but instead, uh, you can go back and get elements, and you can link yourself to the past through things you find in this tower. Hmm. So, like, if you uh, are doing it and a fly flies through, like, you'll go back and you're a mouse. Um, and Logically, you'll yes. Through that. <laughs> An animal past life. Different things that link you. I mean, it could be a fur coat. And then there's also, like, stuff in the tower. So, like, you could go back to, like, if it's a so, teeth <laughs> thing made in China, you're back in China. So, hmm. you're playing an inventor who leaps back within different, so his own lifetime, but different time. No, his own, his, like, you have past lives. Okay. Like, I was once a mouse. So it's, a it's more person. Shirley MacLaine and less Quantum Leap. <laughs> Boy, yes. that was an old no, reference. Wow. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> some of you got it. Some of you are like, I was born 10 years that, ago. That was right. time travel, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So, but the past lives are all aware of the future. No, so. you're, 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 it's your okay. consciousness in the past life. Right. So it would so have to like be. they're like possessed, no. kind of. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Yay. Yeah. Quantum Leap was my favorite show in the world, so. Thank you. All right. Don't pitch Quantum Leap games, please. Yes. Go. <laughs> all right. So in this game, uh, you play as a imp hoping to earn his place among the great demons. And you're going to do this by breaking a person's will and corrupting their soul, all without getting caught in the act. It's called Mission Impossible. Uh, <laughs> it was no, it there's plenty more. <laughs> so, so, this is not just performance art. I, 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 totally I like real. the fact that he's wait, like, wait. I've got more puns. This was let me say. go to the no, next round. I got a lot more titles. No, this is the game. It's, it's good. Uh, so... <laughs> um, so, I, I, yeah, we get to decide we, that. All right. Well, it plays as a physics platforming puzzle as you try to m manipulate the objects around the person in the hopes that it gets a reaction. You want to crush things like confidence and self-respect oh and God. build things like aggravation and game. fear. It was called Geist. <laughs> the point of Geist was to scare, uh, manipulate objects around the host so that you could possess them and then make them do what you want to do. You can do. throw guys' this stuff game in toilets. With, with, <laughs> And uh, yeah, no. ruin their Thank day. Thank you. No, okay. That's Sorry, I've been made. Yay! Yeah. It wasn't an imp, it was a ghost. Yeah. yeah. You know, six of one. Uh. Go on. <laughs> Mission Impossible Ghost <laughs> Protocol. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See what he did there? Oh. <laughs> oh, so, my game is basically the entire world has lost all of its alcohol. And everyone's pissed about it. Everyone's pissed. So all the brewers come together, all the genius minds come together to build a robot that can generate endless alcohol, but he's only one robot. So he has to go through North America and go to each city and fight things like hipsters in Portland who throw, who, who ride on like uh, Priuses and they will throw. But why uh, fight? Why, do we not have alcohol? alcohol because of the hipsters? <laughs> no. Okay. I, well, no, it's it, because well, of yeah, alien. Why are we fighting them? It's, beca it's because the uh, alien race has taken it over, has taken all of it. Uh, and very you, chewy. You Whoa. create, a, a, like I said, a robot, and you go through, and you have weapons such as uh, you have an unlimited hose of alcohol that you subdue your opponents, and then you also have things like uh, jello shot <laughs> machine guns and stuff like that. I imagine just the town, it's like... The alcohol robot's coming! The alcohol <laughs> robot's coming! <laughs> well, they're enraged. They're pissed, so... That's... Why would they go to a town to where they don't want him? <laughs> Just go to any other town. Oh, it, right. Well, you get enraged NASCAR fans, and everyone's just all right. every, angry. No. These are all people that want alcohol. No, no you could, it would be a better no. tycoon game. Three more. So oh. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. In a world of the unborn, you fight for your life in the womb, in fetus frenzy. <laughs> wow. On the connect. <laughs> it's just a lot of... <laughs> a lot of kicking. <laughs> you grow up with the umbilical cord. <laughs> <laughs> That's the multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out some more I, about part it. Part of me wants to, to say yes, and the other part is like, oh, dear God. <laughs> okay. We, we can, yeah. let's say, yeah. we say yes, and then when he steps to the mic, we just say no. All right. <laughs> hey there, Casey. <laughs> 
All right, so mine is a, a Connect game. It's called Love Gun. You play as Gene Simmons, um, and you hit thrust to destroy everything in your path. <laughs> All Kiss soundtrack. Uh, I haven't decided if there's going to be a tongue mechanic yet. <laughs> you got. There's gotta be though. There, uh, there will, there will be. There, there will be, but I haven't decided how it's going to be implemented exactly. Oh, that's so critical. all kiss soundtrack, hip thrust to destroy everything, possibly dinosaurs. I'm not sure. So by Pandering. show of hands, who has checked to see if the Kinect can pick up tongue movements? <laughs> we'll, right. we'll, we'll get we'll get her mind. I actually to thought there'd it. be more of you that had tested this mechanic. <laughs> you have to get your face right up in it. I think. Uh, I also have another game idea. You get one. No, you get one. No, you get one. You don't want to hear my Nicolas no, Cage no, game? No, no, no. Thank you. No, no, thrusts. No. no. Last guy. Last go. guy. Last. Right. Yeah, no, no, no pressure or anything. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I guess this is more of a... Uh, not, there's not, not a wacky theme associated with this, but we've got a, uh, a ro uh, first-person shooter with roguelike tendencies. So the, re the levels are actually randomly generated, so you're not going through memorizing the maps and, like, know which corner to turn around, where the enemy is going to be. But so you just sort of have these randomly assigned challenges. So there's permadeath, loot to grab, randomly assigned loot together, and it's just sort of a skill challenge. So Single now get player. to the design part. Hmm? I, I, I just I don't know what's different from like first person. Yeah, yeah. Right. That, that the levels are random. The Presumably levels are randomly generated, generated, so it's actually a different experience every time you play it. Yeah, but who are you and why are you in them? <laughs> you're a, di yeah. and you're you a dinosaur. You're a dinosaur. You're in the second round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's he's in. Uh, no, no thanks. No. All right, uh, everyone who we said yes to, get back in line. No, no, no. no. <laughs> because it was a dumb idea. No, it's just that easy. No, dude. There's always PAX yeah, Australia. I know. Uh, the, the dinosaurs were a red herring. Red All right. Herring, yeah. what, did, what did you have? Light gun Russian roulette. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Goodness Completely gracious. Completely kid friendly. Um, so is there, is there a gun? Yes. And, yes. and there's a, like a, a chamber. A cylinder like you, on it. You, so I, you mentioned it was freemium. Yes. So what am I buying? So uh, you've got a uh, couple of different things that you can, you can get through the freemium account. Uh, one thing is uh, if you're paying for a, uh, a subscription, your character has better aim. Be what? Wait, are you trying right to next die? To your head? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, so the, you get to think about this. The worst, oh, thing, the worst thing about uh, this is uh, losing Russian roulette's bad. Yeah. Losing Russian roulette and surviving is worse. <laughs> So yeah. you're trying to die. Oh, hold on. Well, you know, you know. What is the win condition? <laughs> you bet with other people and you live. Okay. <laughs> so so it's better and why would you have better aim? You want worse aim. <laughs> it's gambling. You're trying to gamble. I would rather just play cards. <laughs> so, some of the other uh, freemium okay. content will be uh, uh, unique uh, characters, uh, IP. So you have things like, you know, like Mickey it's Mouse. It's me, Mario! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's never going to happen ever. <laughs> that was oh goodness. That was a desperate no. cry. Yeah. No, 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 no. thank you. Okay, well, we vote. We vote. We, we, we will. I'm just saying no to this guy. <laughs> oh, okay, specific. All right. <laughs> that was a preliminary right there. <laughs> okay. Food truck frenzy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's the three. We've got a. It's diner dash meets twisted metal. Twisted metal, metal meets. Something else? Why would, the uh, one? why would the people have, like, in co-op, like, how would you make them interact? So, as opposed to them just playing two separate games? Well, yeah. with things like Puzzle Pirates, you don't actually need to be, uh, like, playing the same game at the same time. But mm. you could actually make it synchronous so that the, what the driver is doing and what the, the shooter is doing affects what the fry cook is doing. Uh, he has you, an you answer. Have, I see. You, you have to stop and like okay. then, then start cooking stuff. Maybe so, if you're driving as erratic, the guy can't cook as well. Exactly. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Hot oil spills everywhere. Interesting. Or, or, or if you're serving a lot of good meals, you can have you, you like, get more, bonus more points money and, for more ammunition. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Hmm. okay. I think we got it. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I would describe my game more, but there's really only one word you need this Christmas season, and it's dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. That's right. <laughs> See, now, 20 minutes later, the humor's kind of run out, hasn't it? <laughs> you, can, you can use a brontosaurus as a whip. I mean, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Who is wielding the dinosaurs? 
You, you are the controller. It could be on Connect or PlayStation Move. Uh, it could be anyone, really. It could be somebody from Cadillacs and dinosaurs. So they're just... It could be a very large man. Dinosaurs yeah. that are yeah, it's, flailing about. It's, it's actually going to be like Jurassic Park Trespasser, where you have the arm floating in front of you. It should be a mechanic where you have to keep it from biting you. <laughs> like, you've got to keep it yeah, out here. Definitely be in there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hey, mine was the first-person looter, but PvP. Um, and to address your concern about everyone being mediocre, the uh, main motivation to keep leveling up and to keep trying to score higher per match is the amount of inventory you have to work with is very limited at the beginning. So in order to get more uh, attachments to your gun, get more uh, perks and whatever that are also part of the randomly generated loot, you need more inventory spaces to use them and they stack. So higher levels always want to keep getting higher levels in order to stack more weapons, more perks. Right, my concern with that would be you essentially create like a min-maxer game where people would go in and they would find whatever the minimum amount of inventory that they would need in order to screw over everyone else without growing at all. Like, would, well, what is, the, what is the best gun? Well, the best gun's clearly the shotgun with these rounds. Then that's all that I really need to make sure that I can kill all of you that are better than me, even though I don't want to get any better. Because it still keeps everybody on that sort of mediocre balance level. Because there's no motivation for me to grow if I know that I'm just going to be a target if I grow. However, if I can shoot you because you are a target, then I'm going to continue to be better than you because I'm still alive. Right. Welcome to Game Balancing 101 with Pork Fry. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Thank you. My game was Paul Bunyan and uh, Shell and Lumberjack. Okay. Babe. The Moon Moose, or what was it? Moon, moon Ox. Moon Ox. Moose. Sorry. <laughs> Canadian version has the Moon how, Moose. How did these characters end up on this interstellar plane of combat? Uh, they both wound up on the Casey Jones Light Express. Duh. <laughs> 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 he pulled that right out of his eyes. I saw him go. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, you are helping, or one of the play levels is where you're helping Casey Jones take over his, uh, retake over his train from the Mudville Nine and Case, uh, Casey the Bat. So, is this a fighter or a brawler? So, is it is it, are um, you, is it here's your characters fight each other, or is it a story progressing? It's more of a brawler. Okay. Um, most levels are going to be brawlers. Uh, there are going to be some first person acts. Combat. Oh, wait a I have a question. Is Paul Bunyan still a gigantic man? Yeah. So you're just stomping on everybody? Uh, everyone's solar in the future. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that one he okay. didn't have to make. He had okay. thought about that ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. I think we got it. Thank you. Hello. My game was The Doppelganger. Oh, the yes. one where you're a master thief and you're trying to sneak into buildings without getting caught by impersonating someone else. Okay, so how do you imagine the gameplay mechanics of stalking? So the stalking, you have a couple different options. And so when the game starts off, basically no one's really looking for you. No one knows there's a thief going out there doppelganging. And so you have a lot more leeway in terms of like tailing people and choosing like whether you want to search their house when they're not there. And like <laughs> you basically get to allocate your time to figure out where you want to invest your activities to try to figure out the best way of impersonating them. And <laughs> what, stu what stuff are you stealing? Because I'm looking at just a time investment. Yeah. Like, like you know, the Hope Diamond or like... So it, it builds up. So like, okay. you basically want to just... And every time you steal something, you'll have some amount of money. And you get to choose whether you want to keep trying to steal. And, like, do another mission, and, which will be harder. And eventually, like, maybe, yeah, she'll go for the Hope Diamond. You'll go for, like, Fort Knox. You know, something crazy. Maybe just stealing some... Patents or like trying to break into Penny Arcade and stealing like all oh. the three-day passes, you know. So, that's so actionable. is it so is it something Ooh. to where like once you've you know you you this stole a TV or got very uncomfortable yeah. for me. I actually mm. liked it better. So, if it was not a thief, but just a stalker. <laughs> like you get a bonus points if you try on his wife's clothes when you're in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you just go up on the creep factor. You just you just find a life that you just really like and yeah. that's it. You just take, you over. Just take over. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a, I guess that's an option too. Like you can just end the game <laughs> well, by basically becoming somebody. That's 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 Wait, the that's okay. the goal is okay. to figure out so who you want to be. So once you once you steal a TV and like they believe it's the other person, do you go there and it's like, "Oh yeah, it was totally this other guy." Like like do you have to 
continue yeah. to follow up the, the thievery or? Yeah. Well, hopefully you move to another city and so you don't have to worry about it. But if you, <laughs> sometimes characters will come back in to the play. So you're just a super itself. asshole and you're just screwing yes. for other people. Yes. Okay, cool. Thanks. I know enough. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, development costs. <laughs> Velvet wings of calamity. Okay, okay. Okay. Proboscis. <laughs> Proboscis, Jeff. Proboscis. Well, actually. <laughs> see what, uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> right on. Okay. I think he's coming up later. So, as the butterfly, how do you manipulate the environment enough to kill the kittens? So, so you're only able to manipulate light objects, and you have to set up chain reactions. It's kind of a little bit of incredible machine, perhaps, kind of thing going on in each room. So that's, that's where the puzzle mechanic comes in. You have to look at the objects in the room, mm. and the things that are light enough for you to manipulate, you have to figure out what are you going to do with those to affect larger things to then either drop things on the kittens or get the kittens to jump into you know, fire or into like the aquarium and they drown or okay, get but, eaten by the piranhas or but whatever. But the idea, the idea ultimately was are, are you, you're not trying to get out of the house, you're just trying to kill kittens. No, you, need, get out of the you house. need to get out of the house. Yes. And yeah. killing the kittens, kittens are logically blocking. gets you out of the house. Well, the kittens want to you know, reach up you. and paw you and yeah. kill right, you. Right, but if so. the kitten's dead, then... How do you get out of the house? They're blocking the critical paths out of each room. Yeah, there's Why don't you just move them to a different room? Move the <laughs> kittens to a different If you could yeah, move stuff to kill, them, kill the kittens, why can't you them. just get the kittens to go to a different just, room? Sure. Potentially, <laughs> yeah, you can get them to the different room. It's much easier room, to but... corral the kittens than no, kill them. I was going to say there's, there could be DLC where you get to play as a human, and so you just take these kittens and you just <laughs> throw them in the fire and just smashing them, and wow. That the might cross the line. I don't know. I was paying attention yesterday. You can leave the Collins house if you want. You can I just stick want around. Stay. I'm actually is, pro kitten. Even if you kill the kitten, <laughs> the only way out just is for a closed there. window, and you just keep bumping against it, constantly, <laughs> unable to leave. I'm too big. I'm too big. <laughs> okay, we know enough. Thank All you. right. My game was the uh, the Sim oh. rising oh, against yes. its, uh, oh, yes. its player. So in what ways would the Sim try to crash the game? So oh. what happens is the Sim goes around the world trying to find glitched objects like uh, books or, or plants or even a wall maybe. Uh, and he has to create a bomb out of them. And then he goes, he finds a glitch in the world. Like, you know when you fall through a world? Yeah. That's a dungeon. So he has to go through that dungeon, which is filled with glitched enemies like other Sims that have sort of been glitched. And at the end of the dungeon, he has to plant the bomb. And as he does that more and more, he creates a more and more fractured world, which eventually becomes so glitched that it crashes and can't work. I'm just seeing so like is, the, is first, the, win the first part of gameplay is like this, is like a house, and then he's just, every corner, the, the sim is just trying to find that hole well, in the map. So the win condition <laughs> is the blue screen of death then? The win condition is that the game ceases to work and blacks out. But while this is happening, so you, well, okay. you have to continue a, being a sim. As a bug tester on the game, oh, I'm, I'm I, right now. <laughs> I don't I'm know if it's on the working inside. as intended or if it's actually broken. It just crashed no, the on the inside, when you pitch this, I'm freaking out I right now. I actually like it more than one. Totally like, yeah. are you, you would never have to patch the game. How do I know? It's <laughs> really broken. It's no, like, it's, oh no, all the crashes are It's not broken, it's design. really no, hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um... The part of the game that makes it not just so much of a straightforward RPG is that you have to continue being a sim. So you're trying to balance adhering to the player's will so he doesn't suspect anything, while you're still... the player! No. <laughs> the player as in the AI player that you're trying to rise against. Wait, yes. so am I the player or am the sim playing the player? You're the sim the playing... You're the sim. Like the player is like the enemy in the so game. So the fifth level of the dream. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right, no. see? Okay. <laughs> All I right. think we have enough. We Thank it. you. Yeah. <laughs> right. The inventor in the tower. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So There's actually uh, God damn, what was the name of that game? So, uh, there, there was a Konami game on the PS1 where you would travel back within time and manipulate the environment. Like uh, something Destiny Spirit... Where, like, if you put the rope too early and then went 10 years in the future and tried to climb it, it would break. But if you only it's went five old. years in the future... In the, in the, in the well, that was that other thing, the Raven thing, too. It's an interesting cut. So what, is, it, is it an adventure game? Is it a puzzle game? Is yeah, it, it's, got, it's an adventure game with puzzle elements. Like, you're trying to find an object that'll link you to yourself before you're bricked in the tower. But you have to do that by going through certain levels. 
and the there. object links you to yourself in time. Like the object links you to the time period and you link yourself to yourself. And the story is you realize you've made a huge mistake and you're trying to go back and correct your Well, you realize mistake. the transporter isn't actually transporting things. Like you thought okay. it was, but they were, I mean, objects and animals, they were just one level, whereas the human is... So the win condition is you stop yourself and the oh. game never happens in the first place. Right. Doom, doom, doom. Or, uh, but I mean, you're aware of that. <laughs> like, you're aware. You're like, yeah, no, it, it works, but I'm going to I'm gonna go test it some more. Like, I mean, you know, it's... You okay. Know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank All you, right, Kurt. Got it. Okay. Oh, past lives. Okay. Oh, yeah. I trust you. It's good. As you should, sir. <laughs> so, one of, the, uh, one of the things you uh, asked about earlier was, you know, how do we prove that words hurt? Well, somebody did say the pen is mightier than the sword. So... You know, that's one of your objects of the game is to prove is to prove that, and that's how you that's why you have but these. How series. do you prove it? What how do you prove a letter writing campaign? You, <laughs> <laughs> an aggressive letter okay. writing campaign. So one 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 of the ways you prove it's like say one of the characters is this guy that's like this paper manufacturer, and so he has unlimited supply of paper, so he can hurl boxes of paper at you. He can. But that's but technically that's not, a weapon, like a stone yeah, that's, or a. That's, but no, but it's but it's different because he's not he's not like very physically capable at all. You know, he's just a guy that sits behind a desk, and so now and he's been sucked into this this fighting game. <laughs> so. But it's still, words don't hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> they will hurt when one no, of these guys. No, they won't. When one of these guys. You know what? First of all, anybody and the people can be very cruel with words. I believe that one of these these, char these characters, especially when you incorporate people like uh, Phoenix Wright, you clear you incorporate like perfectly. You incorporate a lawyer, and as soon as you hit him, he like sues the fuck out of you. So you know, it's like where are we going boom. with this? <laughs> so he hurts you financially. He hurt he hurts you he hurts you financially. Words may never Garnish hurt this. you, but a lean on your house will fuck yes. you up. Yeah. I will garnish your wages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess those words kind of exactly. Do it. And then all you do you think is about it. You, you work all the mechanics. You work all the mechanics, and of course, so you have your classic combos <laughs> and every and everything else. All right. Words still okay. don't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mine was well. Actually, uh, the mechanic is is kind of a an open world. Uh, set in nerdy areas, comic shops, game stores, eventually conventions, and you can either specialize your character in a specific realm of nerddom, or you can branch out into multiple. If you branch out into multiple, it allows you to interrupt more conversations, but if you specialize, it allows you to make people more uncomfortable. So wait a second, what, if you, like, feet into D&D, &D, okay. right, then you can be annoying, or at least talk into D&D &D stuff, but what if I don't feed into D&D, &D, but I still want to talk into it? That can still be really well, annoying. Actually, if I know nothing you can multi-class. you can try. You can still uh, attempt it, but you might fail. That, right, but that's still really annoying. It, it, well, it, seriously, it drow aren't really elves, and they don't live underground. You can just, just poke them on the shoulder. Right? It's done. Get, Everyone's like, oh, no, they totally do. If you get nerd corrected back, oh, the oh, encounter is over. Right, but I'm still so, really annoying. That's absolutely true. And that's, okay. But that's not. But you got to be right. But the goal you is have to just be, you have to be super right, super yes. right, and yeah. be able to hold somebody in your thrall long enough to make them really. How, how do you yes. gain the additional knowledge that? Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, as you, um, if you get nerd corrected back, that's part of the way. Uh, you can also oh. just huh. make. Oh, you can it's force like the sword yourself fighting from Monkey Island. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you you keep people you keep people in. Thralled, you get you can get bonus experience well, in actually, particular you areas like for yeah. cornering people. <laughs> <laughs> for for cornering people, you can drop your bag in so the really, way so they can't move. So it's it's just and a lot of the conversation tree stuff, like from Mass Effect. Kind of. But I, I'm just trying to visualize it. But then there's like the sort of Paragon Renegade. But that's like if you have the nerd cred for it, then you can have that dialogue option. Yes, this it, is one it, of the few games where if you yeah. get corrected, the words do hurt you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, oh that's okay. Funny. But eventually, Thank you. We, we got, got it. it? Yeah, we okay. got it. Thanks, man. Wait, which, what was it called? What was it called? Well, well actually, right. Yes. Well, actually. <laughs> Everyone corrected you. Everyone's like, well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is such a great place for that game. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you. Fetus friends. Oh, oh right. Oh. What's we the... have enough information. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> We're good. Okay. Everything was terrible and nothing was not on fire. Uh, yeah. The, the so, incompetent arsonist. I'm sorry? The, the incompetent, incompetent arsonist. arsonist. Incompetent arsonist. So gameplay-wise, it's a little bit of a mix between Paperboy and a puzzler. You're in nondescript gangster city trying to help your boss collect on insurance scams by setting fires. However, since you're bad at it, fire spreads. 
So you have to burn down your target buildings without burning down any of the mob-owned buildings. So maybe if you want to burn down this old textile factory, but it's by our new strip club, if you just burn down the textile factory, you're going to burn down the strip club, then the boss gets pissed and you're dead. Are you riding a bike? <laughs> yeah, it's indelible. It's in I my mind. I picture him running a bike with these Molotov cocktails or papers that are on yeah, fire, yeah, just yeah. throwing them around yeah. inside, yes. like dodging oh, the dog. Oh, it has to go really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Go really fast. Yeah. Oh, no. But it's instead of a weird. dog, it's like a break dancer on the street asking for money okay. or like the naked cowboy in Times Square. How, how, what is the mechanic of preventing the fire from so, spreading? So, no, the fire spreads. You're, you suck, so the fire has to spread. <laughs> so you have to set fires that will spread to the buildings you want to hit without hitting your own building. So like, you if you wanted yeah. to burn down that textile factory, maybe you burn kitty corner, there's a, a oh, orphanage or something. <laughs> uh, okay, that was bad, but <laughs> the fire oh, spreads. Well, if you can't control the fire, really, yeah. at this point. Maybe yes. the fire will spread then the textile, but maybe. burn out in time to not hit the strip club. So really, you're just gonna set things on fire and hope for the best? <laughs> No, <laughs> or sort the of, worst. Sort <laughs> of. You play Paperboy yeah. while also playing a puzzle game, yeah. and everything's okay. on fire. All right. Okay. Yep. I think we have enough. Thank All you. All right. We are going to confer amongst ourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Okay. Here, let's announce the prize for third place. Sunglasses. Sunglasses. No, those are mine. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, who um, yeah. gave pitches. <laughs> so, third place will get a medal. A coupon code for, I can't remember, a certain dollar amount off at the Penny Arcade store. A steam code for Rain Slick 3 and the finest candies that Canada has to offer. Uh, Smarties and, and a crunchy. Um, Maybe my third turn. place. Gotcha. Well, I, it's so funny because I'm, I'm now thinking about the super indie t-shirts that you could make that actually had this on it with different <laughs> size fonts, right? And now you're with, we're like, this is very marketable. So... <laughs> Well, I'll just say, it was oh, super amazing, book, super sorry. amazing fun. It's sort of a couple games brought together for something super delicious. It was a food truck frenzy. Well done. Well done, Thank sir. You okay. Congrats. Oh, well, give it to a friend. Nice. Uh, second place. Second place. What? Well, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Second place gets all of the aforementioned. I, I did forget to mention, Chris has been kind enough to autograph his book, and that gets included. <laughs> um, second place also gets $70 of, 70 Hong Kong dollars that happen to be in Gordon's pocket. <laughs> so, second place. Uh, second place was uh, Velvet Wings of Calamity, the butterfly, kitten murdering, puzzler. All right. And first prize gets all of that, a larger dollar amount off at the Penny Arcade store, plus a copy of the uh, Paint the Line uh, Ooh. expandable Ooh. card game. Ooh. First prize goes to... First prize goes to, well, actually... Yeah. Thank you very much for coming out. Your ideas were awesome. Thank you for making me laugh so much. Have a great PAX. Bye. See you next time. Bye.